My $150 Xbox One controller takes AA batteries, why do I like that? Well, it's probably because I'm a stupid fanboy of Xbox, I mean, it's there's no other possible, there's a reason. So basically, this is going to be a shorter video, and I'm sorry if you don't like short videos, I have longer ones if you want to watch those. Um, so let's take the battery pack off my, uh, my Elite controller here, and you won't see any AA's. Very important, you will not see AA's in here. You will see this little doodad. This is a rechargeable battery from Microsoft themselves, not a third party. Don't fuck with third party shit like that. Tried that when I was younger. Shit didn't last. So basic, basically, why is that better to me than an integrated battery? Well, because if I wanted to, I could use double A's that are just lying around at a friend's house. I could use rechargeable double A's and then also use those double A's in other items. Or I could buy a play and charge kit, third party or first party, I prefer first party. Edit, edit this out. See, a neat thing is, is that I can just plug in the USB cable that came with this play and charge kit, and when I plug it in with my little fingers, it, it gets a little light. I'll let this uh, focus for you. Yeah, see, so it gets a little light. That means it's charging, and it'll charge whilst I play it, which is why it's called a play and charge. It's signing me in. What's nice about this is that if I also just wanted to take the battery out completely because I'm not going to use it, I could literally just use an off the shelf, shelf, off the shelf, micro USB cable. See this little bitch right here? This is a micro USB cable. You can buy these for like super cheap. Now I do wish Microsoft actually had a proprietary cable. I know that sounds awful and to be honest, I'm kind of glad they don't. But the reason I would like that is that micro USB cables are pretty prone to breaking, to be fair, and that's the one knock I'll give it. But now this is just a wired controller because I don't need batteries. I don't like using wireless. Some people don't like that. And now it's wired. It's a little bit lighter without the battery in it. And I can use it like this. And since I have another Xbox One controller downstairs or somewhere, somewhere around here, I don't know where, I don't know where it is, but because I have another Xbox One controller, I can put this battery in it downstairs and use it for the downstairs Xbox. Yes, I have a downstairs Xbox. White privilege. Either or either way, if this controller had an integrated battery and suddenly it stopped accepting a charge, what would I have to do? What if it stopped holding a charge? I would either have to make it a permanent wired controller or buy a new controller if I wanted to use the wireless functionality. Now you can, on like a PS4 controller for instance, you could take it apart and replace the battery but of course that would void the warranty and there's a bit of hassle in there. You can do it though if you're technically savvy and you want to go online and find PS4 DualShock batteries. The reason I kind of regret that proprietary cable statement is that because I do like the fact that there's options. Most houses have a micro USB cable or double A's, therefore you can always use your controller just about anywhere. It makes them more versatile than the average controller. Double A's, rechargeable double A's, battery packs, third party or first party, doesn't matter. See, let's look at something else. Here's my new 2DS XL. God, I love this thing. It just really screams virgin, I know, but I love the damn thing. I play a Kingdom Hearts game on it, Dream Drop Distance, super fun. If you uh, if you fiddle with the mic, he spins in circles. So it's charging right now. It probably doesn't need to be. Whoop. And so I can um, you know, I can use this on the go because it has a little battery inside of it. The thing is, when that battery goes, so does this. Unless I want to use it as a wired console, which is not the reason I bought a 2DS. Now I could do a repair on it myself. And I really wouldn't want removable batteries, but, well, actually, I kind of would. Take, for instance, two of my old cell phones. One is an iPhone. This is an iPhone 4, I believe? Yeah, iPhone 4. And this iPhone 4, god, it feels so tiny these days. Oh, look at my new phone. It's just flocked and shit. It's like playing with a Game Boy. I think my Game Boy's bigger than this, actually. Either way, this thing's battery started to malfunction and actually the back is peeling off because the battery's fucking expanding and this thing's a fucking hazard. I can't replace the battery in an iPhone. I don't have the tools to do that. I could just pry this bitch open and try to find one online, but not worth it. Meanwhile, on Samsung's offering on this old piece of shit that my girlfriend gave me, still love it, a lot of nostalgia for it, I could just go online and buy a new battery for a Galaxy S3. Batteries are... 
underrated. Because the thing is, you don't have a battery, you don't have power. You don't have power, you don't have a device. And the thing is, this battery goes out, I need a repair shop or a couple online tutorials. This thing's battery goes out, I go online and buy a new battery. And that's the same for my $150 Elite controller. Double A's at my friend's house, rechargeable double A's at a different person's house, or my battery pack that I got for my birthday, or did I buy it? I don't remember. I prefer versatility over sleekness or modernness. Modernness and sleekness and a lot of times feels like another word for, mmm, it broke, buy a new one, don't try to fix it yourself. It is a fact that after a while, rechargeable fucking batteries, I was gonna say rechargeable phones and I was gonna say batteries, so I just put fucking in there, but it's a known fact that rechargeable batteries after a while will stop holding as much of a charge as it used to. So what happens when that is a thing? You go to a repair shop, you look on some online tutorials, but if it's just a replaceable battery, that's easier. So I see a lot of comments and a lot of people saying that, oh, you know, Xbox controllers still use batteries. It's like, yeah, that's a cool thing. And in fact, I'm gonna be pretty mad if Microsoft goes the integrated battery route on the next Elite controller, the Xbox Spider controller, I think is what they're calling it. I'm really concerned about them doing that because, to my opinion, that's a downgrade. Because of that controller, if I if it like lasts with me for like four years and it hasn't broken, I'm guessing it's gonna hold less of a charge. So I'll spend $150 on a fucking controller, more than the price of two full new games, on a controller. And actually, you know, the price of one of these now that I'm fucking this is a fucking console. That's insane. I'll be paying the price of a handheld console for a controller. And if the battery goes out. I have to get a new one, or get pretty clever pretty quick, and I'm not really a fan of that. So yes, Xbox controllers take batteries, and I am proud of it. Not for any sort of fanboyish reason, I just like devices that don't fuck with me. Does this look like it's made by Microsoft? No. And I'd be tooting this thing's horn if it allowed me to replace its battery. It's not a really a brand thing as much as it is a versatility thing. So I mean, I'm sure I'm a fanboy to some of you, but I hope at least if you disagree with me, you understand where I'm coming from, and this is just kind of a small thing, that's why I'm doing it in this silly vlog format. And you can tell it's not that important of a video, because I let my hair look like this on camera for 16,000 people! Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you when I see you. Stay cool. Unlike my haircut.